Hey guys, this video is on your gut health and your intestinal system. Of course, gut health and intestinal system is linked to your digestive system, is part of that huger, larger um, ingestion and digestion <laughs> um, process that we go through when we um, eat and feed our body's foods. And it's a huge topic. I mean, this topic alone is an entire career. It fills books, videos, movies. And so in a 30 minute video that I'm doing, here, it's not obviously not going to be able to cover every single detail. So I'll only skim the physicalities of it, like super, super general, but of course you're invited to, and that is the intention of this video as well, is or this series of videos, is to awaken awareness and a consciousness within you, how we're a holistic system, how everything ties together, and we're not only we are spiritual beings, but we're having a physical experience. And as such, the physicality is an expression or can be an expression of our emotional states, but our physicality can also influence our emotional and our spiritual states as well. So it's a back and forth of information. And um, so I want to make that really clear to you with these videos and inspire you to do your own research and have a look at things for yourself. Now, when it comes to um, gut health, it's such a huge topic because, of course, it starts off with our oral health and our um, dental hygiene and all of this in the mouth and the placements of teeth and even the health of your teeth affects certain organs within. There are charts that can show which teeth or which tooth corresponds to which organ in the body. For example, the front teeth would correspond to the bladder and the kidneys. So anybody with front teeth problem, they're going to have also a corresponding problems or weakness with their bladders and kidneys. But I'll post a link to a chart in the description box below. I don't want to spend too much time on that because I have so much territory to cover. <laughs> but that's where it really starts. And um, it just moves on down from there all the way through. So there's a big shift in our understanding and awareness about the importance of gut health that has been made very popular and very publicized in the last few years. And where we come to understand that our brains maybe attract thoughts or understand thoughts or process thinking and so on and so forth but it's our gut which creates our moods and because our gut communicates with our brains it gives our brains the mood that we're in our brains um uh, kind of uh, direct the thoughts according to the mood. And so there's the shift back and forth. So they've come to recognize that um, certain states of being, such as high stress for extended periods of time, of course, affect your gut health, but by vice versa as well, that these um, unhealthy imbalances in the gut can also affect your process of thinking, your way of thinking, what you perceive, what you see, and um, how how open you are. <laughs> So um, the the it's really important to have a good gut health. Not only that, but um, the balance in your body of um, because we all have certain naturally occurring. Uh, microbiomes and uh, bacteria in our guts that help us digest food, that cre create a certain environment. Um, and this is really important to create the, keep this environment balanced. And you've probably heard a lot about Candida albicans and how that can take over. You've heard a lot about E. coli bacteria and how that can take over. And so you can also, in a certain way, see it as a an attachment or a hijacking. Because <laughs> quite literally, these beings are expanding in a territory that they don't belong in. And there's an intention there. There's an intention there. And where's there? There is intention. There is consciousness, right? So that's a new way of thinking of things. But it can influence your moods. It can influence what you desire, what you crave. For example, with Candida albicans, that you crave more sugar because it desires sugar. So you're craving more starchy foods. You're craving more foods that have a higher sugar content to satisfy this. And this is not your own craving, right? This is coming from this this overflow of that so you want to keep that um, your your environment in balance and that's what I'm here doing with this video 
is helping you um, see what possibilities there are to uh, naturally <laughs> naturally um, deal with with an imbalance in this area. So again, this is like a really brief skim over of the topic. Again, I'm inviting you to, you know, read into it, really get yourself informed, not just on Facebook, but also like dive. Google is in a massive, powerful resource for a reason. So really dive into it and um, read up on it. So there's some, um, myths that I want to like also address for example with food rotting in your gut can food rot in your gut can food like um <sighs> yes and no um it, in a way yes if it if it sits and it's not digested then it does cause obstructions and problems um but in particular people have this concern around meat and um that meat would stay in their gut and rot so those of you that are meat eaters i want to um <sighs> I feel that eating meat has more to do with the energy that you ingest and has more to do with the um, what you allow to occur on this planet. I feel that humans are omnivores and we were created like that for a reason. And same as dogs are carnivores and so on and so forth. And inherently at the bottom of it all, when you, it, it's consciousness feeding on consciousness in cycles, consciousness feeding on consciousness and life feeding itself, right? So, um, if we're eating plants, we're eating life. If we're eating meat, we're eating life. So I don't really have a, um, a, a uh, how should I put it, a resistance or anything like that around that. But what I do want to call to uh, concern is how we produce the meat that we're eating, how we treat the animals that are giving their lives to us. And um, there's something to be said about honoring the entire life cycle of the animal. Um, if you kill the animal, not only just using certain parts of it and throwing the other to waste, but really honoring the life, honoring the the um, the existence of that animal and using it 100%, right? So the bones are used for something, the skin is used for something, every part of the animal is used. And if it's done in an honorable way and it's not done to excess, it's done in a way that honors the cycle of life, that leaves enough so it can replenish itself, then it's the same thing with plants, right? When we go and harvest plants, we're supposed to leave enough so it can replenish itself. But it's a huge topic and it's for each and everybody in themselves to know what's best for them. But like I said, for me, it's more about the energy that we ingest, how, what kind of energy we're ingesting when we're eating, for example, more conscious life forms such as meat. And um, that's something that you really want to consider and think about because it can't be a good thing to eat something that has uh, extreme, <laughs> extreme anxiety, extreme fear states, extreme negative states that they were kept in, held in, and um, then ingest that, plus all the added um, additives, steroids, um, antibiotics, things like that that are added to our meats. It's, it's, it's not the best thing right now. So that's where I'm coming from with this. However, in principle, I'm not against um, the, the eating of meat, right? So I know there have been a lot of channelings, but I've received different channelings. <laughs> and um, it's, it's for me, I've now gained this perspective of life eating life. So in order to completely step out of that cycle, it, we'd have to, we couldn't even become breatharians, right? Because again, we're ingesting life force energy and converting that into energy. And um, that is what we were at the end of the day created to do. That's how we were created to function. But um, it's about us learning to honor that and honor our place and our part in the cycle and um, not overwhelm others, right? So in any case, um, gut health. So food rotting in the gut is not really a, a meat rotting in the gut is not really a thing. Um, 
it it there is concern, for example, that like excessive meat eaters would uh, get especially um, large intestinal cancer, and uh, this has to do with the as from what I understand that there are certain chemicals that are released during the digestion process that have been found to harm the inner lining of the intestines of the colon, and um, so that's where that idea comes from. But the usual digestive cycle lasts about 6 to 12 hours. For men, it's actually faster than for women. There they say that it's 36 hours for the entire digestive cycle. And uh, for women, in 47 hours approximately. So there's another thing to look at and um, consider. It can take up to two days for something to completely digest. Plants take the longest plant fibers. So if something does rot in the gut or take excessively long to digest, it's usually um, indigestible plant fibers. But everything else, we are omnivores. And our teeth also show that we are able to tear meat <laughs> as well as chew. Right? So um, that's the nature of it. We can like it. We don't have to like it, we don't have to accept it, but that's the nature of it. And um, yeah, so anyhow, um, moving onwards, the there's another thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to gut health, and that I don't know how many of you have heard about the Chinese body clock. And uh, this is really used in traditional Chinese medicine, but it's also a great thing for you to know and have on hand. There's so many people that wake up at certain times during the night, and um, some of us think that, oh, it's our angels talking to us, and we're waking up at the same time, at the same day, um, at the same time during the night. But it's not necessarily the angels sometimes, guys. Sometimes we have to listen inward to our own body and see what is it that you want to tell me? What is it that you want to say? So in traditional Chinese medicine, they've defined certain times during the day and during the night at which, uh, which correspond to certain organs and their functions. So each organ has two uh, times. So one time where it's not, where it's barely functioning and going through its sleep cycle, let's say, and another time where it's highly functional. We're focusing on the highly functional times. These are times where you really want to observe these cycles with in your own body and see what comes up for you. But it's also interesting to note the early morning times because these are the times that usually belong to organs such as the gallbladder, the liver, and the lungs. And right in the early morning, the large intestines. And um, so some of you have morning cycles with the large intestines. This is why 6 a.m. is the time of the large intestine. And um, it's a great time to release for the day. <laughs> And um, possibly why um, it, it's also more advised, I've heard in certain energetic circles, to shower in the morning. Um, if you can do it, shower twice, you know, but um, otherwise showering in the morning is really good to release everything. And that's then a full 24-hour cycle, right? So um, the 2 a.m. slot, two to th 1 to 3 a.m. belongs to the liver. And this is a time where a lot of people tend to wake up. And um, I wake up every night at the same time, some people say, and it's always 2.30 a.m. or it's always 3 a.m. or it's always this time. And so this is the time that's given to the liver. And we know that the liver deals with anger. It deals with um, boundary issues. It deals with purification. It deals with um, discernment in a sense, right? And it's, it's right during our deep sleep time and then our liver kicks in, right? And um, it's interesting that the liver is working at this time of night where we're pretty much oblivious to it and unconscious to it and um, it's it's interesting when you wake up in the middle of that because it must be triggering something within your experience that is excessively difficult for you to digest for you to um, let go of for you to find a peaceful way through so again liver and anger pretty much you know they they deal with each other let's just say that and it's usually very active between the hours of 1 to 3 a.m um, the lungs kick in right after that between 3 to 5 a.m right and they detox lungs lungs have to do with your sweat glands and keeping your skin moist as we uh 
briefly discussed. Again, I don't want to dive too much into the physical workings of the organs. It's just too much. And um, I invite you to research this though. So the gallbladder is at 11 p.m. I believe till 1 a.m. where it kicks in, builds blood cells, cellular repair, releases bile, and um, you know helps you sleep also releases a hormones or triggers off hormones I believe at that time so it's great to look at this um, Chinese body clock and I'll put a link in the uh, description box below so you can have a look what times do you wake up at night or what times do you feel more um, activity in your body where you just ignore it and keep going for example the heart has its high point at around noon so um, between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. and it is said that most heart attacks occur around noon time right so there's something to look at as well Okay, so um, let's see here. Um, there was something. When we look at the small intestines, right? So the small intestines um, are about, and in total, the intestines are about seven and a half meters long or 20 feet long. If you'd take them and stretch them out, small intestines and large intestines. So this is a huge part of our body. This is like massive. And when you think about the purpose of the intestines and the small intestines, it withdraws nutrients out of our food right so it starts breaking it down in the stomach it it already starts breaking it down this is the first breakdown is in your mouth and then you swallow the mush <laughs> into your stomach where it completely like disintegrates into little parts <laughs> completely disintegrates into enzymes, proteins, and everything else. And then in the um, small intestines, it's really those nutrients are pulled out of that and um, crosses that blood barrier and is absorbed into your blood. In the large intestines, water is withdrawn out of this food, right? So the water is retained in the body and everything that hasn't been digested is excreted. So of course, on this way, there's so many things that can go wrong. <laughs> there's so many moving parts that can be affected in the digestion, the absorption of food slash information, right? So when we think about this being a second brain in the sense of absorbing information and um, absorbing, how should I put this, absorbing things beyond our immediate awareness or beyond our consciousness or absorbing things which then leads to our consciousness or the rise in our consciousness because some call our inner gut the tree roots right the roots of the tree the roots of the body the roots of the being so if we're absorbing information in the gut we're absorbing it in here and we're not really consciously aware of the entire process we're not consciously aware of what we're absorbing it just runs automatically and we just build ourselves from that and our consciousness arises out of that i hope you can follow me um it's it's something you definitely want to look into more and um, have more understanding where your consciousness arises from where your moods can arise from so understand that we can also be physically um uh, have attachments have physical other consciousness attachments so not only other people but um, the candida albicans is for example it's classified as a fungus right it's classified as a, as a shroom and shrooms have interesting consciousness as some of you that take them know and um, so this is a consciousness that can easily overwhelm <laughs> your unconscious consciousness let's say and um, insert its desires into it and you're walking through your life walking through your day completely unaware of this is why I have this craving this is why I have this irritation this is why I feel this way this is why um, this person smells repulsive to me it's all coming from what we call our gut it's also known as the seat of inner knowing the seat of intuition why because it works outside of our thinking patterns, outside of our analytical and our reasoning uh, mind, right? Actually it gives a mood, it gives an impression, it gives some state of feeling which the mind picks up and then uses to cast that onto the, um, 
ah, they just showed me like literally I saw them taking those those ideas, taking that image and using the mind as a projector to cast it on the on the um, ah, leinwand on the oh my gosh, what's that word? on the movie screen, right? So it's projecting onto the movie screen of our life what we're feeling in here. So this this goes back and forth and hand in hand with anxiety, depression, um, moody states, right? So when we have those states, then we often have thoughts of worry, thoughts of um, fear that we then cast out and then we then we that we then actually experience and live through. So we want to take in consideration that we have two minds, right? One of them is... is um, and not really classified as a traditional mind, right? So it doesn't really deal with thoughts, but it deals with moods. It deals with um, feelings. It deals with, with impressions, right? And this, like I said, can be hijacked by other beings, in a sense, if you want to see it like that. Uh, if you want to consider it like that, if things get out of hand. So... Yeah, it's a very delicate ecosystem in your gut. And um, so I pulled up some oils and there are too many herbs to mention <laughs> that can help your 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 gut flora. And um, but I've put together a little brochure that you are free to download. Right. And just leave me your email address. Of course, you know how this goes. <laughs> Let's not pretend. <laughs> and um, yeah, so um I'm going to show you some oils here that you can use, that you can work with. Uh, with these oils, some of them are very harsh. So it's um, they. It's best that you take them either with uh, gel capsules, with um, a little bit of coconut oil, if you like, right? Because some of them, like um, uh, clove, are fat-soluble. Right, so the eugenol and clove is fat soluble, so you want to take that with a little bit of oil, or um, you can use it on uh, topically, so on the outside of your body, you can use it as rubs, you can inhale them. But um, they're classic, classic, classic in our cooking and in our kitchen. And this is what's so fascinating to me is that especially the older cultures, the Mediterranean culture, for example, worked with some of them or the Asian culture as well. Ayurveda kitchen um, works with them as well um, quite a lot. And um, they help to maintain a healthy gut flora. They help to minimize um, the overgrowth or overtaking of such things such as Candida albicans or, or E. coli. And one of the biggest ones is clove. So I'll show you this one by doTERRA. But just make sure when you get these oils, okay, when you get these oils to work with them, that they're food grade, like doTERRA oils and not just the the um, fragrance essence, okay? <laughs> you can do a lot of damage. So make sure they're food grade oils and um, use them sparingly at first until you get to know how it works with your system. And um, because these oils not only work on the physical level, they also work on the emotional, mental, spiritual level as well. Well, and so whatever needs to shift and change in your being in order to create health is exactly what's going to happen. So if you're not willing to face certain things, certain oils, and I'll tell you the meanings of the oils, um, use them with caution until you're ready to do the work, okay? So let's start off with um, peppermint. And peppermint is known as the oil of the buoyant heart. So peppermint helps us find our joy in life again, helps us um, find that that happiness lifts our spirits up, gets our thoughts into a higher plane. So it's also known as one of the, the um, it's probably one of the more popular stomach or gut health thingamajigs. <laughs> But um, it's 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 uh, you can take it as a gel capsule. You can take it in your tea. You can take it ingested in any which way you choose or you feel is healthy for you. But do realize that peppermint is um, it can irritate your mucous membrane. So be mindful with that. 
And um, with the oil of the buoyant heart, it really helps us to keep our heart open, our thoughts uplifted. Why is that? Why could that be healthy for your gut? Well, if you understand the, the back and forth um, effect between your thoughts and your thinking and your gut health, but also the moods that the gut, an unhealthy imbalanced gut can throw out, which affects your thinking and thoughts, then you'll understand how peppermint can uplift your mood for a moment. <laughs> and um, help you maintain that if you use it consistently, right? And um, help you get your thoughts back on a higher track, which will help balance out how you feel in your gut as well, okay? So there's that one. But of course, it's also known to help with stomach upsets and um, indigestion and things like that. Um, obviously, since I'm not talking about the physical the sides of gut health. It's just too big a topic for this video that I'm doing here. Um, I'm not going to get into the various things such as IBS or Crohn's disease or, 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 or. It's um, just too much for this video, but again, it's to inspire you to do the research and take care of yourself and maintain your own health. So clove has an ingredient and clove has an ingredient called um, eugenol. And eugenol is an efficient antimicrobial that can counter candida albicans overgrowth. And um, so its effects against the yeast are so effective that they're thinking um, it's being studied to provide an over-the-counter internal preparation using clove oil, right? So this is really, really, really good. Those of us that eat maybe a lot of, you know, sugary foods, <laughs> a lot of um, especially processed, refined foods, things like that. Clove oil is really, really good to help with that. And um, again, even if you just smell it, it, it really clears your brain. It clears the fog. It cuts through all the um, this, this nebulousness, right? Then another one that's really good, and this is very well known, is fennel. So fennel has been used for millennia. Fennel has been used for millennia to work with uh, maintaining gut health. And it's a digestive stimulant. So it's uh, connected to estragol or estragol. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. But that's the effective um, ingredient in fennel and it helps to soothe your gut, right? So it's antispasmodic. Then there's oregano, which is also antibacterial. And this is where we're talking about the Mediterranean kitchen, right? And it's antibacterial, um, also antimicrobial, I believe, but it's mainly antibacterial. And this one is one of the harsher oils, so you really want to be careful working with this, especially in this concentrated form. Um, I find in cooking, one drop is enough. Again, um, you can use it as a household cleaner, right? Um, it really helps to, to uh, naturally, right, um, work against bacteria and help stop the spread of, of viruses, right? Without, without, without killing off the good, you know? We want to keep the good. Then there's ginger. And ginger is also alone. Actually, I'm drinking a ginger tea right now. So I just slice my ginger, or well, I have it sliced for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's phenomenal, right? So again, antimicrobial, antibacterial, and thyme. Thyme is also really good for um, your gut health. Also, very uh, one of the harsher oils. Okay, so. Um, let me see, I'll just go through the emotions connected to these oils and the emotions that they address. And um, just bear with me here because I have my notes. 
<laughs> so peppermint, I know, is the oil of the boy and heart because I work with it a lot. Clove is the oil of boundaries. I work with that a lot as well. So it helps you set your boundaries. This is great for people that have no boundaries. This is great for people that are pushovers, <laughs> that allow themselves to be, um, you know, their boundaries to be overstepped consistently. So those of you that are surrounded by people that don't respect, understand your boundaries, this can lead to, of course, um, resentment, anger, which is stored in the gut because you can't release it. So you feel it in your stomach and it burns. And guess what? Clove helps with that. Um, it, it helps to, uh, another one that I wanted to talk about, but I can't show you right now. Speaking of anger is cardamom. And I don't have a bottle right here right now, but check it out. Cardamom. It's the oil of objectivity and it really helps with um, placating your anger, right? It really helps with soothing that anger, making you, helping you see things more objectively, um, not blaming others, not taking things out on others, you know, um, helps you. Uh, with frustration, right? And some of us get so angry that we can't think clearly and cardamom is really helpful with that and in balancing the aggression, right? So, but those of us that keep it stored in our stomachs, clove is really good to be able to set those boundaries and help us to say no to people that are overwhelming, no to people that overstep certain boundaries that we put up, right? So fennel is, um, as we know, is one that is really good for babies, children, um, breastfeeding mothers, <laughs> and it's the oil of responsibility. So this helps people who have a weak sense of self. It helps people who have um, no passion for life, right? And it encourages the soul to take full ownership and responsibility for its choices. Fennel teaches that life is not too much or too big to handle, helps you to live in integrity with yourself. So those of us that have a lot of shame, right? A lot of... Um, a lot of a lot of stressors that don't allow us to really express ourselves fully that make ourselves feel negative about our own selves and how we express ourselves in the world that make us unwilling to take on that responsibility because at the end of the day we're we're ashamed we're we're in shame or have eating issues right so those of us that are emotional eaters that don't listen to those body signals that I'm full or I'm hungry uh, fennel is really good to work with that, right? So it supports you in listening to your body. It supports you in reconnecting you to your body. It supports you in releasing feelings of shame or guilt. And it supports you in wanting to take on that responsibility for life again. So it's a really nurturing oil. <laughs> Very feminine, I feel, in its essence. And um, it gently pushes you to stand up on your own two feet. Then oregano is an oil that's really interesting as well. And that is the oil of, um, one second. The oil of humility, I'm sorry. Humility and non-attachment. It cuts through the fluff of life and it removes blocks, clears negativity, cuts away negative attachments. This is really, um, good for people, especially those of us that work energetically. It's really good, along with tea tree oil, right? To after readings or after sessions or after healing sessions to just cleanse your space with, cleanse yourself with. You can use it. It's part of the ingredients in my spray. You can use it in your spray to um, dispel negative energies and entities and thought forms and beings because as above so below so if it dispels parasites on a physical level then on the astral or etheric level it's also more likely to dispel negative or harmful energies then there's ginger and ginger is great because it's the oil of empowerment and it addresses deep patterns of victim mentality, right? So if you're really, this is, I mean, this is addressing all those, those emotions that we hold on to, that we store in our guts, quite literally, right? All these feelings that we store in our, our stomach, that tight feeling that 
turns off our solar plexus that that makes us smaller that makes us shrink that makes us not want to connect or express ourselves or open up right that makes us not want to think positively that makes us think negatively first negatively about a situation and negative about it before we even enter into it and these are referring to the thoughts not that we have on this open conscious level but the the thoughts at the back of your mind you know before you walk into a room you already have that feeling or that thought this is not going to work out this is where it goes in this is where these oils work that i'm talking about and this is also the atmosphere created by your gut right so you really want to address that in order to have more effect when you're thinking positively consciously right because then all parts of your being are aligned to that so ginger is great because it addresses deep patterns of victim mentality so deep assumptions that are held within you that things are not going to work out for you things are going to go wrong people are going to use you and even if you try to overcome that belief you're still having it, right? So ginger um, kind of clears that out, right? That the vibration or the resonance of ginger doesn't allow that to settle, okay? And thyme or thyme is an oil of releasing. So this is one of the most powerful cleansers of the emotional body and assists in addressing trapped feelings which have been buried for a long time. It reaches deep within the body and soul, searching for unresolved negativity. It brings to the surface old stagnant feelings. It's helpful in treating the toxic emotions of hate, rage, anger, resentment, which cause the heart to close. It empties the soul of negativity. Now, Hildegard von Bingen believed that we were in the soul, that the body is in the soul. Those of you that don't know of Hildegard von Bingen, I will post a link beneath this video. You can check her out. She was a medieval healer of great importance and um, she believed that the body was within the soul and not the other way around as was taught at the time that the soul is within the body right and so this is really interesting because if we are in the soul and not vice versa then it really is the soul that is condensing into the body and so we have to work on the soul level first right these etheric kind of not really there levels first for some of us in order to have that effect manifest into our bodies, in which case essential oils, um, aromatherapy, things like that are really homeopathic stuff, um, Bach gluten, you name it, is really, really, really beneficial. Okay, so um, that was that with thyme. And with thyme, that is one of the oils that I wanted to caution you about, you know, when you're working, that you really want to be ready for what it has to release. So when you're working with these oils, um, be really... Um, mindful because you never know what can come up and you want to be prepared for this you want to be in the mindset for this you want to be ready for this because it can really cause things in your life to happen <laughs> and um spiral a little bit out of control <laughs> and um and yeah just be ready for it be ready for for what's what could happen okay so those are some oils that you can work with and like i said i have a download available for you and um, with more herbal recipes that you can work with tinctures and it covers topics such as um, diarrhea indigestion um, constipation you name it heartburn and these are just um, natural remedies that have been used for <sighs> hundreds of years and you can just try it out and see how it works for you obviously it's great to check in with your naturopath or your doctor if you're having severe symptoms and to be careful with these herbs because they um, affect everyone a little bit differently for some people it's going to be just a breeze and for others it's going to be a little bit more interesting so be mindful and oh there are some exercises that I wanted to introduce you to and show you and these are to help you calm the triple warmer. What is the triple warmer? The triple warmer is part, again, of traditional Chinese medicine. And in that, I'm really going to condense it. <laughs> they believe that um, this is part of your meridian system. 
and it helps you generate the energy that you need to do what you need to do. So there are three parts to it, and the first part is roughly in this area, the second part is roughly in the area of your kidneys, and the third part is roughly lower, so in approximation. And um, in general, you can picture a water wheel, and so the water is the chi or life force energy, and the wheel turns that, and through that the energy is generated to be used. And so this triple warmer you can see as that water wheel that generates the energy that you need to get things done, to do things. So um, sometimes this is out of whack, it's out of balance, and of course it also links in with the rest of our, um, we are a holistic system, <laughs> so it links in with a lot of things. It, it can create um, feelings of anxiety, or if there's too much energy and it's not going anywhere, um, it can generate feelings of worry and things like that. So I'm just going to show some exercises when you're having excessive anxiety and worry, which of course affects your gut health and vice versa. Your gut health will trigger these feelings, depending. Um, there are several exercises that you can do, and you can do this anywhere at any time at your workplace. You can do it for other people as well. So the first one, is a smoothing of the triple warmer. So you want to go backwards. The flow of the triple warmer is going in this direction. So it's coming down over your head. You want to push that back, right? So you place your fingers at your temples. And when you breathe in, you slide your fingers up and around your ears. And you're maintaining some slight pressure. And when you breathe out, you're sliding your fingers down and behind your neck and hang them on your shoulders. And when you're ready, right, drag them over the top of your shoulders and smooth them to the middle of your chest over your heart. Okay? So you're drawing from your temples over your ears, down under your ears, down your neck, down your shoulders and down to your heart, right? So you breathe in. When you start here, you're breathing in. And when you, and press down, and when you're about here, you breathe out. Now I messed that up, but that's okay. You get the gist. And down to your heart, right? So once again, And this will calm you right down, right? And there's a smaller one you can do as well. And this is a tapping exercise. So on the back of your hand, find the groove between the ring and pinky finger. So that would be right here, right? And what you can do is you can tap into the groove and you can think of stress, okay? So tap into the groove and you can rest your hand on your heart if you choose but you're thinking of stress. And tap into that groove. Okay? And it calms your stress, your anxiety, and your worry. Okay? Then um, you can also do this one. So you're breathing in. And using the opposite hand. So I'm going to do, or wait, I'll do the right side again. And using the opposite hand, begin at the temple. Trace down over the ear, around to the shoulder. Down to the elbow. Down to the fourth or ring finger. And pull off that finger. I like to, um, negative energy, I like to just dis you know, don't throw it on someone, but you can imagine a vortex on the ground and you can just flick it into that vortex, right? So you take a deep breath in. You're using the opposite hand from the side that you're working on. You're taking a deep breath in. It's similar to the first exercise, except the first exercise goes to the heart. This one you're tracing down and you're going over your shoulder, down your arm, down your elbow, down your hand, down your ring finger, and you're throwing it off. Okay, and you do that three times and then you do the other side. Same thing, around, down, 
down over your elbow, down, 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 and you're throwing it up. Um, and then another one that I really like is the, these, it's kind of like hugging yourself, right? So again, you um, use this, start off with the opposite hand to the side that you're working with. So let's start off with the right side. So I take my left hand and I place my left hand on my right rib cage. And then my right hand is on the back of the left elbow. Okay. And um, I'm taking several deep breaths. And again, this will just calm you right down. So it's really important because sometimes um, we just accept states of anxiety. We accept states of worry and we don't really think about where is it coming from. Do I really have a reason to be anxious? Do I have a reason to worry? Do I have a reason to fear? <laughs> Uh, there's there's no there's a reason why fear is here you know this is this is there's a reason why fear is here so um do things to calm yourself down and train your mind to get into a state of calmness right and this will help you um to figure out what's going on with your gut, right? So is there really a reason for me to feel anxious right now? And if you're looking around and everything's okay, it's not necessarily that a bus is coming and is ready. Maybe your your gut flora is just not in balance and you need to consider what you're eating and that it's time to make a shift and a change, all right? Okay, take care, you guys. Mwah! And I hope you have a wonderful time with the exercises in this video and I will see you next Thursday with a new one. Bye.